For the first time, I come to you empty-handed. I don't have a watch to show you on my 7-inch wrist, or to display casually on a table like I didn't spend two minutes getting the bracelet just right. All I have to share with you are my thoughts, some press photos, and other people's content. Please don't sue me. Last week, dozens of watch brands showed off their latest pieces at Watches and Wonders in Geneva. And a lot of these novelties ugh, got me excited. I don't have press access in any way. There are plenty of creators who do this better than I ever could. But this year, I don't know, I can't help myself. This is purely self-indulgent. So here I want to cover my favorite new releases and maybe mention a few others that aren't my favorites but that people have been asking me about. So let's take a virtual trip to Watches and Wonders. Let's start with Hermès. Her Hermès. Hermès. The Assur le Temps Voyageur. This is a clever and fun world timer. Pressing the pusher on the side of the watch moves the dial and a red indicator to the proper city and it advances the hour hand. There's also a large date window at 12 o'clock. I love world timers like this with this push button functionality, but this is the first time I've ever seen one use a dial as the pointer. Really smart, handsome, and I'd probably break it by fidgeting with it so much. And it can be yours for the low, low price of $22,550 for the 38mm steel version, or $28,825 for the 41mm DLC Platinum. Black DLC Platinum. Sure, why not? Next, let's see a watch from Japan, and probably the finest watch that nation has ever produced. The Grand Seiko Kodo Constant Force Tourbillon. This thing is bananas. It uses the first movement ever to have a tourbillon and a constant force mechanism as a single unit on a single axis. Now this movement actually debuted a couple years ago in the T0 concept watch, but this is the first time it's commercially available. And in my opinion, this reference is much better looking than that conceptual predecessor. Grand Seiko is legit. You all knew that. Most of the Swiss industry has known that for a while, but to all the doubters, here's yet another nail in the coffin of it's just Seiko. Also, this is accurate to 0.3 seconds per day. The Grand Seiko Kodo Constant Force Tourbillon is $350,000, and only 20 will be made, so act now while supplies last. Okay, let's get into something that I would and actually could buy. The Mont Blanc 1858 GMT. Mont Blanc makes some really attractive watches and some that just don't work for me. I want them to succeed, so when I saw this I got excited. This is a 41mm steel GMT watch with 100 meters of water resistance. I like music to my ears. And my favorite part is the GMT display. Instead of using a fourth hand to point to the 24 hour bezel, this watch uses a rotating disc along the dial's periphery. You read the GMT time by identifying where the red block is. It's so much cleaner this way. I haven't seen any live photos or videos of this watch, so I don't know how legible that red block truly is. I also don't know if it slowly moves or it jumps, but either way, I like the effort. Another thing that helped put this watch on my list is that I believe there's a micro adjustment system built into the clasp. Mont Blanc has done this with other bracelet clasps, so I'm pretty hopeful. The 1858 GMT lists for $3,515 on a strap and $3,730 on a bracelet. Another favorite of mine is the new IWC Top Gun Lake Tahoe. Not much is new here, in fact, just the white ceramic case is new. But for me, that's enough. I'm strangely attracted to white watches and ceramic cases. They're pretty silly, and in that way they're honest. If you fancy yourself a fan of aviation and watches, I don't think IWC is where you should put your attention or money. Try Tutama or Marathon. This though, this is just fun. There's another on my favorites list that has aviation roots, the Cartier Santos Dumont. This new limited edition made my list as soon as I saw it. This is a Santos Dumont in the large size with a rose gold case, and that has had a ivory lacquer applied to it. The dial matches the lacquer and has a square pattern etched into it, and it mirrors the square dial aperture. I've never seen anything like this. The color is like butter, and I really like how the bevels of the case look like they're worn away, showing the rose gold underneath. The watch is limited to just 200 pieces, and it lists for 12,000 euros. 
There's another watch from Cartier on my list, and one that really dropped my jaw. It's the Mas Mysterious. Mysterious Mass in English, which is also the name of something you don't want your doctor to find in you. I still can't get my head around this watch. Rather than a stationary movement with a rotating rotor weight, the entire movement is the rotor weight. What a f***ing clever idea. I bet Cartier wasn't the first company to come up with this idea, but they might be the first that could actually build it, let alone have it fit perfectly into their collection. The watch uses a 43mm platinum case and lists for 250,000 euros. Sorry about that. Now a couple more affordable pieces. First, the Aorus ProPilot X Caliber 400. A few years ago, Aorus debuted the ProPilot X with a 10-day Caliber 115 movement. Very interesting piece for the brand with a price tag of just under $8,000. This year, Aorus debuted a more affordable and stylistically more subdued version of the ProPilot X with the brand's new movement, the Caliber 400, which is also in some of the Aquas's. This ProPilot X uses a lot of the same design cues from the previous ProPilot X, including the angular and modern titanium bracelet and the airplane seatbelt style clasp. The watch comes in three colors, blue, gray, and salmon. Pink? This color is really bold and such a strange choice for this case and bracelet design, and I like the combo so much because it confuses me. It makes me think, which is something I rarely do. I'm not totally sold on the ultra-modern aesthetic of the watch either, but it's one of my favorites from Watches and Wonders because I like what Oris is up to. The watch lists for $4,300. Another affordable piece is the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer Solar Graph. This is a solar-powered quartz watch. I'm so happy to see Switzerland embracing solar. Last year, when Cartier debuted the Tank Solar Beat, they made some waves. Or are they particles? Not waves. The market responded strongly to that solar watch, and I think it will respond positively to this one too. This is a 40mm steel watch with a black DLC treatment and a rubber strap. Great size and no cyclops. And then there's the loom. There is loom. The full seconds hand, the bezel numerals, and parts of the bezel in a marble pattern. Rather than a ceramic or metallic bezel, the bezel insert on this is made of forged carbon with luminous materials layered in, so that explains the pattern. The watch lists for $2,950. While this isn't exactly my personal style, I could see myself owning this watch. I like what TAG has been doing with the Aqua Racers. Now this watch might not be a hit with unreasonable watch nerds, but I do think it will appeal to a lot of normies that do not share our affliction. The Parmigiani PF GMT Rattrapant is very cool. I had a few discussions about this watch with people on Instagram, and it sounds like not everyone understands what's unique about it. This is a dual-time watch. There are two hour hands that can be set independently. Using the pusher at 8 o'clock, the wearer can advance the white metal hour hand in order to track a second time zone. This ain't new. It might be new to Parmigiani, but many watches have this feature. What is entirely new to the industry is the Rattrapant part. Usually this term is used only for chronographs, but here it refers to that second hour hand. When the wearer lands back in their home time zone, they press the rose gold button on the crown and the white metal hand catches up with the other. That is what Rattrapant means, to catch up. It's such a simple and smart idea, I can't believe I've never seen it before. The watch is in steel and costs $28,700. Bravo, Parmigiani. Back to Japan for another favorite from Grand Seiko, the SBGE285 Spring Drive GMT. The titanium case is 41mm across and 13.9mm thick. Not what I would have wished for, but not bad. It has 100 meters of water resistance, it has loom, it has drilled lugs. Inside the watch is the 9R66 GMT Spring Drive movement. It's got 72 hours of power reserve and is accurate to plus or minus just one second per day, because that's how they do. From what I can tell, the dial texture is very similar to the Grand Seiko Snowflake. So and it has a much more subtle texture than the White Birch. Everyone loves the White Birch dial, but I prefer this. The SBGE285 lists for $8,400. This is the new Grand Seiko pricing. Love it or leave it. And the final watch on my list of favorites is the Vacheron Constantin Historiques 222. This is a pretty faithful recreation of the classic 222, which led the way to the modern overseas line. And it's just 
gorgeous, it's spectacular. And I say that with some resignation because it's not really new. At least the parts that I like aren't. The design is old. In a way, I, I don't want to reward brands for pulling watches out of their archives and recreating them. Sure, the movement's new, but the design, there's no innovation here. And yet, and yet, I love it. The yellow gold case is 37 millimeters across and 8 millimeters thick. It has 50 meters of water resistance, and I don't know the price. It doesn't matter. You can't get one. I'm pretty sure about that. And that's my list of favorite watches from Watches and Wonders 2022. Did you notice that I didn't include anything from the House of Rolex? The new Air King is fine. Rolex changed the case in a positive way. It's slimmer. It has crown guards. And they updated the dial. They added a zero in front of the five, and they filled the 369 numerals with loom. Good stuff. Not inspiring, though. The new left-hand GMT is... I don't hate it like so many people do. In fact, if I thought I could get one, I might try. I like the colors, and I think it's historic to see Rolex do a left-hand drive watch. For those poor souls deep into the world of Rolex, I'd say that a left-hander is even shocking, but nothing very innovative here. And of course, there's the Tudor Black Bay Pro, an in-house GMT movement with a 39mm case from a Rolex brand on a great bracelet with an adjustment system. All for $4,000. I can't really argue with it. It's great. Go buy it. But for me, there are two things that just don't work. First is the 14.6 millimeter thickness. It's not awful, but for a GMT, that movement should be slimmer. Other Flyer GMT watches aren't this thick. And the real stopper for me is just that I don't like how it looks. I don't dislike it, but it's unoriginal. It's an obvious take on the first ever Rolex Explorer II, the 1655. It's handsome, but I'd rather see Tudor do more with modern designs like they've been doing with the Pelagos. And that's it. That's all for me on Watches and Wonders. I can't believe I actually made a video all about my opinions. I feel dirty. But if you enjoyed this video or got something out of it, let me know in the comments. I'm really curious if this kind of video is something I should do more of. But don't worry, I'll never stop going hands-on with watches I find interesting, inspiring, or even dumb.